Seaweed has been farmed by coastal communities around the world for centuries, but more recently, there's been a growing interest in the plant due to its many uses, not just in food production, but increasingly in pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and even as a biofuel. Situated within the nutrient-rich coral triangle, Sabah was once one of the world's largest producers of seaweed, but in recent years has fallen behind some of its neighbors, such as the Philippines and Indonesia. So helping to bring seaweed back to the forefront is Simon Davis and his team at Seedling, a fledgling biotechnology company based in Kota Kinabalu. Seedling is using the latest scientific research to rejuvenate the local seaweed industry and empower the communities who grow it. So the seaweed industry in Sabah really is so basic. Actually, the seaweed industry in the whole world is so basic. It's essentially in the Stone Age. People will paddle out their canoe and they'll plant it by hand and they'll harvest it by hand. Uh, it's like rice farming was a hundred years ago. There's been no science put into it to make the plants grow faster. So that's what we're doing and that's why I came to the University of Malaysia Sabah, to UMS, uh, to the Biotechnology Research Institute and we formed a collaboration to bring the cutting edge science to improve the lives of seaweed farmers. Seedling's current projects focus on researching and developing technology that will not only enable seaweed to grow faster than it's ever done before, but it will also mean that farmers can have access to a reliable source of seedlings for their crops. If you're a seaweed farmer now, you don't have any options if a storm comes and destroys your farm or a disease comes and destroys all your plants. It's very different than if you were a rice farmer where you can go and order more seeds and replant again. As a seaweed farmer, you can't do that. With what Seedling has developed, we can give seedlings to farmers so they can not only restock their farm, but they can restock their farm with the best varieties of seaweeds that will get the best performance so they can be more successful. It sounds really good on paper, but how does it actually work? To provide farmers with the best quality seaweed, Seedling is conducting research into the plant's genetics to better understand how they can be grown more effectively from a scientific point of view. In terms of how molecular biologists to help in seaweed farming, I will categorize them into two categories, which is species identifications and species selections. For species identification, mostly we help the farmers to identify the species that they are farming, because based on the appearance of the seaweed itself, they may look alike. For the second part is the species selections. We will select the best seedlings which have a superior trait, for example, like disease resistant, fast growing, um, stress tolerance. The process of selecting superior seedlings starts with examining the plants right at the molecular level, at the DNA itself, and seeing what makes each of them unique. We will do the sampling in the field, so we will look for the healthy and the sick samples, which is like two different categories. So when we get the, uh, when we get the sample bags in the lab, we will isolate their DNA and then we will compare between healthy and sick. When we found the unique DNA, the genes that, which is only available from the healthy samples, we will form a marker for that one. We will use that one as a prop to, to screen any incoming samples that we have before we provide the seedlings to the farmers. Alongside their research in genomics, the team is developing a hatchery tank system that will enable larger quantities of these superior seedlings to be produced for mass cultivation. With the support of the Department of Fisheries, one of seedlings' hatchery tanks is now being housed at the department's site in Tuaran. In seedling, uh, where we have our hatchery, we try to work with how we produce the seedling itself. For example, in the current uh, farming, they use a very big size of seedling, but then what we are doing here with our technology, we are actually producing a smaller size of seedling that actually can resist more to the disease or everything. What makes it special is because we already reduced the time for the seedling to grow, and also we reduce the workload and we, we reduce the energy that they will use to uh, maintain the whole culture and the whole cultivations of seaweed. What Simon and his team believe is that these seedling hatcheries can significantly impact the livelihoods of local communities. With quality seedlings, seaweed farmers and their families are able to grow resilient, more sustainable crops as a reliable source of income. The coastal community, most of them is doing the fishing. But then if we can provide them another set of working, which is uh, seaweed farming, then they can have a two, two kinds of field for their income. 
and also can help the the women, not just the men, to work in that kind of community. Because uh, previously, they don't allow the women to involve in this kind of community because they hope that the women will just do all the housing kind of work. But then we actually convince them the seaweed farming actually can give you a good amount of money, then they can involve the women in doing the cultivation activities. Whilst the team at Seedling are making huge strides in the industry here in Sabah, the work that they do has the potential to offer far greater benefits beyond our waters on a national and even global scale. So in the ocean, sustainability is so important now because we've been catching too many fish around the world and the world's ocean is on the verge of collapse. What we need is an industry to be sustainable in the ocean and that's what seaweed farming is. And much the same as we did the same thing on land 10,000 years ago where we stopped catching animals by hunting and we switched to being farmers. In the ocean, we're still hunting fish. We need to move to being farmers. Uh, the United Nations has stated that we need to double the world food production by 2050. We can't grow any more food on land. We've already cut down all the rainforest. The ocean is 70% of this Earth's surface. We need to start growing food on the ocean to feed the world. I think this project is so important because uh, no one has done that before. Uh, we, Seedlings, is the first one who take the initiative to do these projects to help the farmer to have a good to have a consistent productivity in terms of seaweed production. We are hoping that we can provide the solution not just for ourselves in the future but then for our future generation because the seaweed farming is not just helping the local community or the yeah the coastal community but it actually can boost up our economy and importantly since we are now struggling with the issues of climate change and the issues of the ocean acidification, that's where this seaweed farming can help in serving our environment by giving out the best that we can. Sabah has everything it needs to become the next major player in the world seaweed industry. It's about connecting the dots. Simon Davis and Seedling are doing just that to help boost what could be a thriving, sustainable industry for Sabah's local communities for a world that is in desperate need of finding alternative solutions to the growing demands in food production and natural resources, perhaps we should be looking more to our oceans to provide the answers. Perhaps in something as simple as the humble seaweed. <laughs>